the Sweet 16 and that game uh, next Friday. And here are the starting lineups. For Stanford, uh, the football star Johnson with Borchardt, big seven footer, Jacobson, a 22 point average, Barnes and Joe Bikini. For Kansas, good in the All America, Collison, big strong. Keith Langford makes his first ever start. The freshman from Fort Worth, Kirk Heinrich, who sprained his ankle two nights ago, will not start, might play. We'll find out. Miles and Boshi completes the Kansas starting lineup. Will he play it all tonight, Armin Katayan? Well, Dick, I talked to him just moments ago on the floor, and I said, Kirk, are you going to play tonight? He gave me this big smile and said, you know, I really don't know. But from the look on his face, I think I can tell you this. If Kansas needs him tonight, and in watching him in warm-ups, very agile, running pain-free, I would not be surprised if he came out on this floor. Back to you. All right, and here's the injury. Against Holy Cross, the final minute of the first half, he goes up for a shot, comes down on a player's foot, turns that left ankle, was on crutches, had a temporary brace, was unable to practice yesterday, and the shoot-around today was limping. And then uh, before the game tonight, with uh, just a uh, whole oh, half hour ago, looked as if that uh, he was 100%. Well, he looks like he can play, but Roy Williams obviously is going to take the, the safe route. But without Heinrich, you're missing your glue guy, your cat. He sets the tone defensively. He helps the freshmen out there. It's going to be a lot more pressure on those freshman guards, Langford and Miles, but he is the team leader, and that's a big loss. And pressure on Roy Williams and uh, the Kansas team because as number one seeds, they're expected to go on. Mike Montgomery knows well that feeling. He's been number one a couple of three times the last uh, five years and uh, unable to advance beyond the uh, the Elite Eight, Roy Williams in his 14th year. He took over for Larry Brown after Brown took Kansas to the national title in 1988. Valentine, Donato, and Gray with the whistles. Crowd of some 30,000, the largest crowds of all the regionals here in St. Louis. Kansas has dominated the series. The last meeting a long time ago, however, the total whipping of the Cardinal. Borchardt to Johnson and then to Boshi and Kansas will get the first chance. This is good. Boshi. Collison around Borchardt and scores and that was important for Kansas. Collison admitted he had a terrible game against Holy Cross. Five points and six turnovers. He said I want to get off to an aggressive start. And for Mike Montgomery trying to prepare his team for this game for 48 hours you have to assume that Kirk Heinrich is going to play and then take it as a bonus if he doesn't. And Gooden off the steal and it's 4 nothing Jayhawks. And that's the one thing that Stanford has to do is, first of all, take care of the basketball, take good shots, keep people off the offensive board, and make sure you get back to take away the devastating transition game of Kansas. And Langford, the freshman, forcing another turnover. And it's a 4-0 lead and the ball for the Jayhawks. A mishandle there by Julius Barnes, almost giving it away to Boshi. And Drew Good showing as a 6'10 man how he can get out and fly. Miles to Boshi, their three-point shooter. Out to Joe Bikini. Senior from Salt Lake City, doesn't shoot much, runs the show. Orchard at seven feet, leading rebounder for the Cardinal on the season. Kansas showing you how they can get up and pressure the basketball. They don't do a lot of trapping. They just get up on you, meet you in half court, make it very tough for you. Langford on Jacobson, a second-team All-America, and no basket, a travel the call. Third turnover in the first minute and 22 seconds for Montgomery's Cardinal. Now Stanford has to settle down here. And of course, they obviously got to get Casey Jacobson. They're all American. It scores 22 a game. They got to get him shots. And Collison, good entry pass. And Collison and Kansas lead 6 0 early. That's the sign of a very, very good player, Dick, who struggled, as you said, just two for six against Kansas, but he did have nine rebounds and four blocks in that game and a couple of steals. So he did other things when the shot wasn't dropping for him. Jacobson blocked by Collison. Miles to the other end draws the foul from Joe Bikini, and what a start for the Kansas Jayhawks. Nick Collison breaking through 
on Curtis Borchard, who has to be very careful. Now, he's an outstanding shot blocker, but he can't get in foul trouble. Then Casey Jacobson, not realizing that there's some tall timber in there as Collis had knocked it out of there. And then here comes Aaron Miles, going to get hammered by Joe Bikini. Miles makes it 7 0. He's a freshman from Portland, Oregon. The officials had to go over to Coach Roy Williams of Kansas and tell him to keep his players and the coaching staff near the bench. They are so hyped for this game, getting up on cheering on every play, jumping out on the floor. 8 0 Kansas. And they really have turned up the defensive pressure. They didn't play like this against Holy Cross on Thursday night when they were in trouble down late in the second half. Another block. Jacobson fighting it. Another block by Gooden. Borcher can't hit. Out of bounds to Kansas. Oh, my. How many white jerseys are there out there? Every dribble is challenged. Every pass is challenged. And look at this. Gooden coming from behind on Borchard. And Casey jo Jacobson gets stoned once again on his shot attempt. Allison and Jacobson and a held ball. The arrow points for Stanford. So two minutes and 32 seconds into the game. Stanford yet to score. Roy Williams up off the bench barking at his team unhappy with the eight nothing lead. <laughs> he wants perfection. Three turnovers forced by the Kansas defense three block shots. Look at Miles all over. Joe Bikini the point man and almost another turnover. Joe Bikini tried to bat it ahead. Boshi picks it up for Kansas. And this is Kansas at their best bring the ball into the offensive end. Langford playing for Heinrich inside to Collison. He's got six points. Kansas leads 10 to nothing. I don't know how Keith Langford could see Collison except for the fact that he knows he's always ready on the baseline, has terrific hands, and just dropped it down where only Collison could catch and finish. Mike Montgomery's theory on using timeouts, he said, I call him when I think my team's in a panic situation, but if the other team's just out playing us, we'll try to play through those moments. Joe Bikini can't hit. Here comes Kansas again. And Stanford can't even get a good look at the basket on those layup attempts. They couldn't even see the rim with hands up in the air. Collison, who had only five points on Thursday night, has eight points in a little over three minutes tonight. And Mike Montgomery, stubbornly, I might add, just letting his team try to figure it out. but. They don't seem to have any kind of answer now. They just can't even make a pass until now. Oh. No basket there. A foul on Jacobson for the charge. It's all Kansas to the delight of this partisan crowd. Well to nothing, the Jayhawks without Kirk Heinrich. What an early knockout punch as the Stanford Cardinal are reeling on the ropes right now. They need some kind of stop or a block shot from Borchard or a defensive rebound. They need a, some kind of a run out and get a layup to get on the board. And Boshi from three. And a dagger from Boshi makes it 15 to nothing. And Mike Montgomery refuses to call a timeout and stop the bleeding. He may go to the bench and make substitutions before he takes the timeout. Johnson inside to Borchard. And finally, with 15-28 remaining in this opening half, Stanford on the scoreboard. But it's not like the Kansas Jayhawks are going to let you take a sigh of relief here. They just keep pushing the ball right back at you. Brett Ballard into the game for the first time at guard for Kansas. Out of bounds off Borchard. And a timeout. And they're on their feet in the Kansas cheering section. Roy Williams' team leads 15-2. Montgomery uh, not calling a timeout. He knew the commercial timeout at four minutes was going to erupt sooner or later. Right there, the Stanford turnovers, and they've been costly for nine points. We talked about that issue with Mike yesterday because when uh, uh, Western Kentucky went on a run in the first half, I asked him why he didn't take the time. I said, I don't like to take it. I like to let the team uh, figure it out. He took a glance at the clock. He knew the TV timeout was coming. That's the old theory of uh, John Wooden at UCLA. Never call the first timeout. It's a sign of weakness. 
No white flag for Montgomery, although Kansas had run off 15 unanswered. Barnes with a steal for Stanford. Here's Jacobson. Wayne Simeon in the ball game for the first time for Kansas. Number 23. Teo Johnson. And Hernandez makes his first appearance. Chris Hernandez, a freshman at point guard. Borchard to Barnes for three. Oh, does Stanford need that? 15-5, so five points unanswered for Stanford after they fell behind 15-0. Miles, a twisting move. And Borchard with a rebound. Now, good things will happen for Stanford on slow times up the floor if they can wait for Curtis Borchard to get the ball inside to him. And Borchard is leveled as a heavy collision in the lane. Jeff Boshi on the backside reaching in, picks up his first foul. Mike Montgomery in his 16th year as the Stanford head coach. Graduate Long Beach High School, Millican High, and uh, Long Beach State. He really has brought uh, the Stanford program up to the elite status in his uh, tenure in Palo Alto. Curtis Borchard coming off a very solid game against Western Kentucky. We were all anticipating the matchup with Chris Marcus had never really developed because Marcus was in early foul trouble. They did go at each other in the second half, but 19 points, 12 rebounds, five blocks for Borchard in that game. Now Stanford after Kansas open with 15 in a row. It's the Cardinal with six straight as Langford goes in and scores, and he's fouled. Keith Langford. Well, the difficulty for the perimeter defenders of Stanford are trying to peep, uh, guard the dribbler and Casey Jacobson getting bumped off on that ball screen. Somebody's got to help him there. Casey does struggle a bit when he has to guard the quicker players out on the perimeter. Justin Davis just into the game, a 6'8 sophomore from Berkeley with a foul. Langford short, batted out by Simeon and another chance for Kansas. Allison, his pass deflected, goes to Simeon. Hernandez on Miles, two freshmen. Miles to Collison, works his way inside, blocked by Borcher, controlled by Jacobson. Uh, things have settled down now a little bit. It's a furious rush early on. Here in St. Louis, a remarkable start for the number one seed, Kansas Jayhawks. 15-0 start before Stanford could answer with six in a row of their own at 17-6 now, with 13-34 remaining in the opening half. And Jeff Boshi nails another three, and Kansas leads by the football score, 20-6. Chris Hernandez in the point guard spot now, replacing Tony uh, Joe Bikini a couple minutes ago. Mike Montgomery hoping for Hernandez to be able to at least get Stanford into some kind of productive offense. Aaron Miles with a rebound and quickly scoots it up court and throws it away. Here comes Kirk Heinrich, and listen to this crowd cheer. It would have been hard to believe that he would play today. 48 hours ago, coming down awkwardly on the left ankle, twisting it, couldn't put weight on it, came back to sit on the bench, was in crutches, had a brace yesterday, could barely walk, and here he is playing today. Well, Mike, I mean, uh, Roy Williams told us yesterday that the good news was that there was not any swelling. And a quick move by Casey Jacobson on the back door. He scores, and he's fouled. Foul on Langford is first. Well, Borchard going up to the high post now. Take a little of that pressure off down low where he's been uh, getting uh, uh, knocked around like a uh, pinball out there. And he's able to deliver uh, whatever, but you got to get Casey Jacobson some shots. And they've got to set screens for him, and he has to move well without the ball. First points for Jacobson as Collison with a strong move. The block by Josh Childress, but a foul. Collison wanting the basket on goaltending as well. As this junior at six feet nine steps to the line. Borchert the foul is first. Collison's from Iowa Falls, Iowa. Two-time state champions 
He was co-Mr. Iowa basketball in high school with Kirk Heinrich. They were roommates then, now teammates. Grew up a Hawkeye fan that uh, broke the hearts of those Iowa faithful that uh, he went on to Kansas. Much like a former Kansas Jayhawk, Rafe LaFrance, did the same thing. Remains 20 to 9. Jacobson maneuvering, sets up Childress from the side. And Boshi and Simeon, and it's Simeon with the rebound. Henry buries it in. Roy Williams said he was not going to play Kirk Heinrich unless he was convinced, Roy Williams convinced, that Heinrich was 95%. Boshi's got two threes, misses this time. And Collison battles to Cardinal and wins the battle for the free ball. Boshi, three. He's hit three trays in the opening eight minutes, and Kansas enjoys a 23-9 lead. Well, not that things weren't going well for Kansas right out of the shoot, but when Kirk Heiner comes on the floor, things go even better. The ball starts to move. Everybody seems to be in sync at the same time. Borchardt shooting from outside, and then Childress can't save. And a timeout. 11.39 left in this opening half. And what a start for Kansas. Boshi, three threes. Greg Gumbel in New York. We will bring you back to St. Louis for more of Kansas and Stanford in just a moment. Right now, we'll let you listen into what's happening at Arco Arena in Sacramento, Indiana, with a 22-10 lead on the Seahawks of UNC Wilmington. Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. North Carolina Wilmington 10, 8.15 to play until halftime. Indiana shooting it at 56% from the field. Meanwhile, the Seahawks, after that tremendous performance against USC, Jerry Wainwright's team, two out of 12 shooting. And if you look at statistics for the regular season, the Seahawks have played in most scoring basketball games in the 60 range. They like to keep it there, but I don't think the 60 that they've been held to and played to is quite like what the pace is defensively of the Hoosiers right now. Wainwright told us he's got much more offensive firepower this season than in past years, and there's Anthony Terrell showing off his jump shot. Terrell now with six points. It's a 10-point game, 7.48 left to go, first half. Now this is where Indiana generally runs their good sets. Looking for Jeffries on the blocks. There's the ball in his hands. Double team on Jeffries. The kickoffs. Moyer open look for three. Great pass from Jeffries. Understanding the play, understanding who's going to be open. Good diagonal. The winner of this game moves on to Lexington to meet Duke's Blue Devils. Right now, let's get you back to St. Louis, where they are fighting for a spot in the Sweet 16 in Madison, Wisconsin next weekend. Let's return you to Dick Enberg and Matt Duke. Kansas Jayhawks, the number one seed. Catapulted out of the gate. 15-0 start and lead at 25-11 with clock ticking down to the midpoint of this first 20-minute period. And Heinrich for three. I guess he's okay. Two for two. Five quick points for Heinrich. <laughs> Mom and dad love it. Jim and Nancy, he's a coach. Coached him in high school. She's an English teacher. Jacobson. And he's fouled, and we'll be able to finish the story now. The Heinrichs, get this, on Thursday night, saw their son play, saw the injury, drove home to uh, Sioux City, Iowa, over 500 miles so that they could teach on Friday, taught Friday, got back in the car, drove another 500 miles back so they could be here in St. Louis for this game today. Well, is that ever dedication, not only to the teaching, but to their son, Kurt? They must have used up all their snow days or something. <laughs> Dad, Dad's going to have trouble staying with us. <laughs> Jim, a brilliant uh, high school coach in Iowa, and, and uh, he uh, has certainly coached a very disciplined player in his son, Kirk, that Roy Williams said, I've never met a player that tried to be better every day. This Kirk is just the perfect pupil. He said he would, he would give him a list of things to work on in the summer. He said you had to be careful with it because he would try to do every one of them. One year was come back to improve the three-point shot. This year was come back with improved strength so he wouldn't get bumped off a lot of plays. 
Collison and a whistle underneath and a hold on Justin Davis of Stanford is second. Let's take a look at this shot by Kirk Heinrich. Plenty of time left on the shot clock, but yeah, I mentioned that he's playing a little bit tentatively compared to when he is 100%, but just going straight up with the shot, a little bit falling back. He wants to make sure that he lands solidly on two feet, not to re-injure that ankle. Collison can't connect and Childress, the freshman. Pulls it down for Stanford, ahead to Jacobson. He takes it to the iron and scores, no whistle. 28-15, seven points for Jacobson. Ballard to Gooden. And it'll be a block, and Davis quickly has three fouls for Stanford, and Teo Johnson jumps off his seat, and he'll come back in for Stanford. Uh, Kirk Heinrich a little bit slow getting out to Casey Jacobson and Casey not feeling comfortable with his jump shot yet but this is normally what he likes to do anyway he seeks out contact takes the ball hard to the basket at every opportunity so Davis out and in for the first time Rob Little a 6'10 freshman from Fairfax Virginia number 42 Nick Collison with a terrific start he was he was the spark the igniter for that 15 0 beginning he scored eight points in the first three minutes Boshi Heinrich knocks it out of bounds. No, they're going to give it to Kansas. Heinrich over the top. Looked to have touched it last. Yeah, Josh Childress had the inside position, and when you do, you have to go up with two hands strong instead of trying to snatch it with one. There's too many active bodies on this Kansas team. Just under nine minutes left in this opening half. 28-15, Kansas. Simeon, freshman. And he loses the handle, but it was last touched by Stanford, I believe. Yes. 25 seconds on the shot clock. <laughs> 35 seconds. Uh, Mike Montgomery and Roy Williams uh, disagree there. Montgomery would like 40 or 45, and Williams said, I'll take 25. I'm, I'm, I don't want to waste the day. I, I want to get it down there and shoot it in 10 seconds. Yeah, they're both on the rules committee for the college coaches, and he's, Mike but, uh, Montgomery said, or Roy Williams said, that they disagree on a lot. They're good friends, but they have about 180 degree difference of opinion on many issues. Teo Johnson rebounding the miss shot by Childress and a whistle in the lane. Reach in on one of the Kansas players as we remind you to follow every play from each game of the tournament with live scoreboards and game centers at cbs.sportsline.com or on America Online at our keyboard CBS Sportsline. Foul on Wayne Simeon of Kansas, his first for the Jayhawks there, fourth team foul, Stanford with six. And Julius Barnes coming in for Casey Jacobson, and this is a situation Mike Montgomery does not like, both Borchard and Jacobson off the floor at the same time. Mayo Johnson taking a shot a little out of his range, and, but he comes back, makes the defensive play. It'll be Stanford headed the other way as Nick Collison returns to the Kansas lineup. That looked like that ball was clearly off Teo Johnson, but you got to wonder now where Stanford is going to find some points. Uh, Julius Barnes is a slasher. And get the ball in his hands. Childress, same type of player. We've got Borchard and Jacobson, the two leading scorers on the bench, along with uh, Tony Jovacchini. So three starters being rested by Mike Montgomery as Childress fires the three well short. Heinrich picks it up and heads Kansas to the other end. Takes the three. That's amazing. Amazing. <laughs> Not many thought he'd play after seeing him yesterday, and he comes in, he has hit two threes plus a deuce, and has eight points. <laughs> and Roy Williams told Heinrich, he said, you are the last person I am going to ask about whether or not you think you should play, because I don't trust you on this particular issue, because I know what you'll say. So again, it had to be a, a big discussion with the, uh, the team doctors, the trainers, and the judgment of Roy Williams. Uh, Williams has to be pleased with everything he's seen thus far. His team came out like caged tigers. That'll keep Dad away. Yeah, barely. <laughs> oh, yeah. Kirk made another shot. <laughs> Where's the bed? <laughs> I, I, need a, I need a pillow. Do you see how the, the precautions they're taking with that bad ankle? Of course, that cuts down on a lot of mobility, which is a good thing, but 
you know, with, with bad ankles, sometimes uh, you got to be very careful if you favor them so much. Now you, you're, you're fooling around with, with possible knee injury. So checking to see who should be at the line. Boshi has taken the position uh, thus far, and here's another recruit from out of the state of Kansas uh, as Roy Williams and the officials check uh, the replay apparently. Boshi at the line from Valley City, North Dakota, where he was a two time North Dakota high school player of the year. His brother uh, played at the University of North Dakota, his older brother Mike. And as you've seen already, it's one of the many offensive weapons of this mm. Kansas team. And you start worrying about Callison and Drew Good in the All America inside, and then Boshi. Uh, spots up outside and can hurt you deeply. Dickie try to find a weakness on their team and you know coaches around the country say you know there are none. They, they, they play the transition game the secondary break game better than anybody else in, in college basketball. Their set offense is good. They rebound well with with Collison and Gooden. The teams that have beaten them uh, UCLA uh, Ball State uh, Oklahoma. Oklahoma they all jumped on them early and got big leads in the first half. And kind of stayed on them, and you know that. Of course, you'd love to be able to jump on them early, and but you got to catch them on on days when they're just not making shots early in the game. Didn't so, happen today. No, we didn't, certainly didn't see it here tonight. And when you see this kind of start and how quickly they can build a huge lead, you think about a, a really a top team, uh, Bobby Knight's Texas Tech team, losing 90 to 50 yeah. to this Kansas club. I mean, they can they come in waves when they're uh, uh, cooking, and they certainly started that way tonight. Uh, then you're looking at a, at a team like Stanford who rely so heavily on Casey Jacobson and Curtis Borcher for their points and then it's always a, a mad search to get some scoring by not, not necessarily a third scorer. They just need contributions by committee after that and Mike Montgomery really at this point never knows where that's going to come from. After the delay indeed it was Boshi at the line and he hits the free throw. At the 737 mark, Boshi now with 10 points. Apparently, they were concerned about who committed the last foul as well. And we'll have that confirmed for you when we return. A commercial break, 737 remaining in a Kansas first half. Greg Gumbel in New York, Kansas with a 33 to 15 lead on Stanford coming up on seven and a half to play in the first half. We are going to switch you out to Sacramento, California and give you a listen in to what UNC Wilmington and Indiana are doing. We'll do that right after this. Hi everyone, welcome once again. Singular at the half here in New York. Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg at halftime. The Hoosiers lead at 31-25. If I were Mike Davis, I'd be a little concerned because my lead was a lot bigger than this earlier. I agree with you wholeheartedly, Greg. They were up double digits at one time and were on cruise control. But UNC Wilmington, 10 of 10 from the foul line. That's what's kept them in it. And Indiana now only up by six at the half. They'll have to continue to do what they did early on. Good, solid defense, executing their offense and knocking down their shots, especially inside. Winner of this game qualifies for a spot in the Sweet 16 in Lexington against Duke next weekend. Meanwhile, in St. Louis, the other game in action right now, Kansas with a 38-23 lead on Stanford, coming up on three and a half to play in the first half. Let's go to St. Louis. Dick Enberg and Matt Gukas. With 3.45 left in this opening half, the top seed in the Midwest, the Kansas Jayhawks, feeding off to a 15-point start. 15-0 lead. Still hold that advantage as we close in on the final minutes of this opening half. Well, their defense was fast and furious to start this game, forcing turnover after turnover. It has settled down a little bit, and Stanford is getting used to the timing of the defense and at least able to complete some passes now. Turnover as Heinrich uh, called for the violation. But he's uh, in the game when many thought he wouldn't play, and he certainly has contributed as you check how well Kansas has shot the ball and Stanford finding the defense of the Jayhawks tenacious early on. Casey Jacobson, the only Stanford Cardinal able to get any kind of scoring done, and he's doing it primarily from the free throw line, just looking for a body to bang into. Borchard. Able to lay one in. Five 
points for him. For Mike Montgomery, he'd like to see his team get it down into single-digit deficit as Borchard makes the block and then gets the rebound, and he's followed by Gooden. Nice high-low action for Stanford. Joe Kirchhofer able to dump the pass down, but a good seal in there by Borchardt and terrific hands. Lots of traffic in there. It's pretty tough to, win, to come away with the pass there against some quick, active defenders. And at the other end of the floor, Curtis Borchardt, an outstanding shot blocker. You see, it scored 19 in the win against Western Kentucky, averaging 17 on the season and uh, led the Cardinal in rebounds with 11 and a half a game. He's just happy to be playing this year the last couple of years suffering uh, stress fractures in his foot. John Borchard who nine years was a top offensive lineman in the National Football League. Six of those with Seattle and that's uh, where the Borchards make their home. Pushes the ball so hard at you. Beautiful spin move inside by Drew Gooden. Four points for Gooden, the All-American. You hear the fans go, ooh, uh, when he performs. I think a lot of people just enjoy the way Kansas plays so quickly. Chris Hurt. The same word my partner Clark Kellogg just used watching the Kansas Jayhawks at work. They appear to be too quick for Stanford, 40 to 26, the Jayhawks in the lead. Earlier today in St. Louis, Kentucky's Wildcats moved on to the Sweet 16, 87-82 over Tulsa. Tayshawn Prince, what a day he had. Get used to how that looks. Three-pointer at halftime gave the Wildcats a one-point lead. How about a little D from Prince? Swanson shot denied in at the other end. Bogans. Tough little leaner here in traffic. The score is tied at 45. And then, as Tubby Smith applauds, Antonio Reed with the open three tied the game at 58, but they couldn't stop Tayshawn Prince. A career high, 41 points. Just raining threes left and right. Wildcats led big there. They won by five, 87 to 82. In Sacramento today, the Oregon Ducks, the number two seed in the Midwest, survived Wake Forest, 92 to 87. Wake's leading scorer for the game, Craig Dawson, with 20 points, had to sit out the last seven minutes, but his team still almost pulled it off. Jamal Levy gives the Wake Forest Dean and Deacons a one-point lead. Luke Ridenauer, the deep three-pointer, his seventh of the game, gave the Ducks a two-point lead. They go on to win it by a score of 92 to 87. They're in the Sweet 16 in Madison, Wisconsin. In Albuquerque today, Wyoming gave it a valiant effort but fell to the third seed in the West, the Wildcats of Arizona, 68 to 60. Luke Walton, short jumper, draws the foul, 44-39, Zona. Wyoming would not go away, though, Greg. Josh Davis going to get this missed shot, put it in the hoop, and is fouled. They were within 6, 53, 47. But young Mr. Walton again, 21 points, 9 rebounds on the day, moves inside. Nice soft touch. Arizona in the Sweet 16. They're off to San Jose. They win it 68 to 60. Also going to San Jose, the Missouri Tigers. The Tigers knock off number four seed, Ohio State in the West. Kareem Rush, long three, bounce, drops in. And then Clarence Gilbert. ATM time cash money from deep, although he banked that one in. That's even more of an ATM. Ricky Paulding, he led him with 20. Off the steal, he'll throw it down. 36-21 Missouri. Ricky Paulding had a chance to do a lot of that. This time, Arthur Johnson gives him a chance to slam it home. Missouri's Tigers, a winner over the fourth seed Buckeyes, 83-67. to In Greenville, South Carolina, Kent State knocked off the number two seed Crimson Tide of Alabama, 71-58. Trevor Huffman, his specialty, the three. How about looking at Trevor do it again? All day long, they took Alabama off the dribble and buried open shots, 53-33 golden flashes. And then Antonio Gates working off the bounce, step away jump shot, 66-48 Kent. This time Trevor Huffman ahead of the pack for the layup, golden flashes up 66-48, and then Eric Thomas with a deep three-pointer to put the lid on it. Kent State off to the Sweet 16 in Lexington, Kentucky, 71-58 over the Crimson Tide. And Notre Dame gave the Duke Blue Devils a fight but the top seed in the South. Won it by a score of 84-77, Jason Williams to the hole. But Notre Dame was battling all game long. Ryan Humphrey working the weak side glass, board, and throw down. They're within three. Tied game, here's Boozer. Left hand jump hook. 
Notre Dame trying to catch up. Chris Thomas will miss the three pointer. Matt Carroll is there, but with the offensive foul go the Irish hopes. Duke a winner. Duke off to Lexington, Kentucky as a member of the Sweet 16 as well. We thank you for joining us here on Singular at the Half. Coming up, the second half of UNC Wilmington, Indiana in Sacramento right after this. CBA Sports presents Singular at the Half. Sponsored by Singular, the wireless company that supports self-expression nationwide. And as they're under seven minutes to play in regulation, the top seed in the Midwest, Kansas, leading over Stanford. Let's join Dick Emberg and Matt Gukas. With our producer, Bob Mons back, who uh, grew up in the Bay Area, and so all of his uh, Cal Berkeley fans are eager to hear that he's doing so well. <laughs> Stand for two for 18 is the stat of the game. Get complete tournament coverage at cbs.sportsline.com or America Online. Enter keyword CBS Sportline. Our director is Larry Cavallino, Dick Ember, Matt Kukas, Armit Katea here in St. Louis. And while it's been a lopsided game, when you see any sport played at its very best, it's, a, it's just exciting to be a witness to just how good this Kansas team is. A beautiful display in every area of the game. Came right out, started with a 15-0 run, just put the Stanford Cardinal back on their heels. They recovered a little bit midway through the first half, but once uh, Kirk Heinrich came into the game, he took it to even another level as far as playing the game the right way. Not a pleasant night for Mike Montgomery. A long trip home to uh, Stanford. Uh, does get that opening round win as the number eight seed. Orchard well short. And I think, again, so many of the shots for Stanford short indicating their fatigue. So, uh, Kansas would advance against the winner tomorrow Creighton and Illinois and they'll play uh, next Friday in Madison Wisconsin and the top seed in the Midwest Kansas well on its way to a date in Madison Wisconsin let's take you back to the Arco Arena in Sacramento California and rejoin Ian Eagle and Jim Spinarco. To our studios here in New York, Greg Gumbel along with Clark Kellogg, a reminder to you that tonight on CBS coming up, it is the district starring Craig T. Nelson. We will see you at noon tomorrow, Eastern Time, and our first game of the day is in the West. The eighth seed UCLA Bruins take on the top seed in the West, the Cincinnati Bearcats. Then, four more games come your way about 2.15. They'll include number six, Texas, against number three, Mississippi State, and number two, UConn, against NC State in the East. California will play Pitt in the South, and we'll wind up with three games at about 440 Eastern time and they'll include number two Oklahoma number three Georgia and top seed Maryland Clark a couple of things today some surprise visitors to the Sweet 16 are number 10 Kent State and number 12 Missouri and Ian Eagle said it right Indiana basketball is back Mike Davis brings the Hoosiers two wins in a tournament for the first time since Branch McCracken almost 50 years ago yeah it's been a while and Mike Davis and his team deserve an awful lot of credit all of the teams that advance Kent, Kent State you mentioned outstanding backcourt players that just get after it and play. I'm looking forward to a great day tomorrow, Greg. When I said that about Branch, about Mike Davis and Branch McCracken, that is other than Bob Knight, of course, <laughs> who, who did it a couple Qualify of times. That. Yes, All sir. right, we thank you very much for joining us, everyone, and we will see you at noon Eastern Time tomorrow here on CBS for the Waiver Clark Kellogg and for all of us here at CBS Sports. I'm Greg Gumbel. Good night. Uh, back here. Um, could you take us through those uh, two back-to-back -back blocks in the same possession and tell us a little bit about what that did for you guys? Uh, I was uh, I was just so hyped before the game just to go out there and play, and uh, I was just mentally focused. And uh, you know, that's something I'm not known for is blocking shots, but uh, <laughs> I saw Curtis Borcher trying to go for a dunk, and uh, I blocked that. And I saw Casey get the ball back, and I knew he's going to put it up, put it back up quick. So I just stretched out with my left hand and blocked that shot. I think uh, it was just everybody had a part to play, and I think every possession somebody went out, and I think it was just contagious, and everybody caught on and went all out after that. Good answer. 
This is for Jeff. Uh, how how uh, emotionally lifting was it to see Kirk out there and once he you know on the bench and then once he came out on the on the court did it did it bring you guys to another level? I think so. You know, Kirk does doesn't bring you know points to this team. He's you know our best defender out there and, and uh, you know he does the little things. If there's a loose ball, he's gonna get it most of the time. And uh, you know, the kids. The kid is just relentless out there, and it's just so comforting to, you know, have him out on the floor and, and know that he's uh, in the lineup with us. You know that Boshi's getting old when he calls his junior classmate a kid. <laughs> uh, Jeff, this is sort of a two-part question. They put about four different guys on you trying to stop you, and it didn't seem to matter who was on it. Can you talk a little bit about the groove that you were in? And also, I was wondering if you've ever been defended by a guy as tall as Josh, Josh Childress. If I've ever been what? Guarded by somebody as tall as Childress. Uh, well, you know, uh, I had some great screens out on the perimeter. Nick was doing, Nick was doing a great job of, uh, you know, burying Barnes early in, early in the game and then making it tough for him to get around those screens. And, and uh, you know, la uh, past couple of days in practice, we've been talking about uh, setting and using screens a lot better. And I think we did a great job of that tonight um, in this game. And, uh, you know, Josh is a, you know, he's a, a good defender out there. He's got some long arms. And uh, he's a tall kid, and, and, you know, for me to be this small out on the floor, to be defended by a 6'8 guy, you know, I've got to use my head and, and be able to use those screens. This is for any of you guys. D did you guys know the plan with Kirk, that he would come Hands in? Kansas out of the Sweet 16, so is Mike Davis and Indiana. Let's listen in to his postgame news conference live. He's going to determine whether or not he got back in, but uh, uh, I never looked at the clock and saw what the score was. I went in the locker room at halftime and asked my assistants what the score was. A lot of times at home, as I'm running out, I look up at the clock over the tunnel, the area we go out, but this time there wasn't one there, and I didn't want to look stupid trying to look up and people think, what the crap's he looking for? Is that a normal policy? Yeah, I try to talk to our kids all the time about playing each possession, don't look at the score, and so I try to act that discipline myself as to, I want to know how I think we're playing, not just some score telling me. And so I had no idea what the score was. I thought we were playing pretty well. Uh, but, uh, you know, when we went off the court at half, I really did. Uh, they could have said we'd have been up 12, and I would have said we were up 22, and I said, okay. Well, you're someone who looks for good luck in all kinds of places. Have you found it in this injury to Heinrich and the struggles and, and the chip on the shoulder that the team might have right now? Well, you know, there's it, a lot of things. I mean, I'm surprised I didn't read the article that, that Nick did, but it is amazing, fellas. We were 30-3 and three before the game, and uh, even the people in Kansas were sort of saying bad things about this team. And uh, um, we, don't, we don't have to be everybody's darling. I'm not saying you've got to be great to us and all that stuff, but I said I was proud of my team in the Holy Cross game, and I honestly was proud of my team because there were a lot of negative things going on out there, and they fought through it and played team basketball and executed, and, and we got the win. And uh, uh, so I think that I don't want Kirk to get hurt again. Uh, you know, I don't want to reach down and try that again. I mean, just like today, I mean, he's the only guy that went into the cheerleaders and falls down. He goes off the end of the court, and you know, the guy that hurts, the guy that was falling down all the time. And that one time where he sort of got undercut, uh, I thought it was his ankle at that time, but, but it was his thigh. But I think there was some unifying outlying causes there. One, everybody, I asked them to pull up a little bit more because Kirk, I did not think, was going to play. When I got on the bus today after the shoot-around, I told the team, I do not think Kirk will play. So between now and game time, everybody focus on doing a little bit more to pull your part so Kirk can get a chance to play next week. And that's honestly the way I felt. And... Uh, uh, and I said it again to him in the locker room. In fact, I couldn't look at him in the locker room when I was talking about it. And I'm a candy or whatever you want to call it because I am emotional about kids that I care about. But, uh, um, you know, there was some things, again, uh, everybody bad-mouthing us and Kirk's injury. There were a lot of things there. Perhaps uh, um, I did say this, let's shut everybody up. Let's go out and play. But it wasn't any win one for the Gipper or win one against Pete Mayer or anybody else. You answered my question about the timeline on Kirk, but he, when he came out after that first seven minutes that he was in, I just want to make sure, was that, it looked like just to catch a blow. I mean, yeah, he, he gave the tired signal. Yeah, he, I did not substitute uh, Kirk a single time tonight. Every time that he came out, after he went in, every time he came out, he substituted himself and he put himself back in. When he came out that last time, I said, just stay loose, stay into it. I don't know if I'm going to use you or not. All uh, right. Do you think, Coach, is Danny over here, yeah, Danny. do you think the uh, 
how important did you feel like the start of the game was? You mentioned just from a playing standpoint. Did you feel like your team's confidence had been shaken at all in the two games and that a, a fast start was maybe more important than it usually is? You know, I, I'm one of those guys, I don't think the game's ever lost in the first two minutes. You know, you guys just go back two weeks ago tomorrow on Sunday at Missouri. We were down 10-2. I didn't call a timeout and I didn't go over there and hair out or rant and rave or anything like that. Uh, I felt very good. Uh, you know, and I knew, as I told Bob, I had, they had no idea it was 15-0. I just know that they picked up a loose ball and scored their first basket. I was ticked off that they scored. But uh, um, whether you get off to a fast start or not, I think sometimes, in my own opinion, that's overplayed, as overrated, as long as you're playing hard and in a frenzy defensively. Now, I don't think you can turn it up too much during a game. I think you've got to be into it defensively right from the start and maintain that. So that's what I was looking for. You know, I really don't think they had doubts. I mean, you know, Oklahoma's pretty good, guys. You know, I mean, they're not bad. And, uh, you know, we, we did some nice things, and then all of a sudden we didn't play very well down the stretch, and they won. And then Holy Cross, you know, that's, uh, that's a team that played a four-point game last year against Kentucky. You know, they weren't Alva Martek. And uh, so, uh, again, I said that I was proud of my team. I told them that, and you guys are the only ones that doubted that. You know, but uh, sometimes co as coaches, we do play games, but uh, uh, con people and con kids, con media or anything like that. But you're looking at a guy that does that few, the least amount of any coach I know. I mean, I tell you the truth. We're under three minutes. We have two questions up. Go, please. It's about one more question as long as my answers are. Coach, uh, last year in the second round, you had a pretty convincing win over uh, Syracuse. And then you ran into Illinois, there's a possibility that you might run into that same team again. Uh, how do you maintain this kind of intensity going into next week? Well, right now we'll let them relax tomorrow for sure. And, uh, and then we'll start trying to focus on whomever we're playing next, probably on Monday. Um, I don't even know if they, we play Thursday or Friday. I have no idea. Uh, but, uh, you know, Illinois, I think, may be playing as good a basketball as anybody in the country right now. They had a tougher stretch early in the season, and somewhat like us, the last four or five days, people were saying bad things about them, and I think they've gotten together. They've gotten a couple of their injured players back, and uh, I think, again, they're playing as well as anybody. Uh, uh, you know, one of the things about it was disappointing to me is everybody talks about the problems that this team is having, and I said it yesterday at the press conference. This group of kids has always played well, played their best basketball at the end of the season. I mean, last year and we were a four seed. Yes, we lost as a four seed in the round of 16, which is sort of where they plan four seeds to, to get to, but we lost to a number one seed. But nobody said anything about that. And the year before, we lost to a number one seed. And the year before that, we were six seed and lost to a three seed. So I think that this, that's the only disappointing thing is that, you know, if anybody screwed it up, old Roy has, because I was the only guy that was there in 97, 98. But uh, these kids have played pretty doggone well at the end of the year, and we'll try to get them relaxed a little bit the next day or so and try to whoever we're playing. All right, a very entertaining post-game news conference with Roy Williams, as he referred to. Whoever they are playing, they will play the winner of tomorrow's Creighton-Illinois game as Kansas moves on to the Sweet 16 in the Midwest region. They'll be playing their next game Friday in Madison, Wisconsin. Joel Lennart is going to be with us throughout the night. we got much more to get to, including, yeah, action in the NBA, believe it or not. Celtics and Spurs, two of the best teams in the league. A couple streaks on the line. Tell you about that. And ESPN News continues. Him play the opening round game against Holy Cross, and he revised that. He said, wait a second, maybe we have a chance. I'm changing my mind, <laughs> especially if Kirk Heinrich couldn't go. Heinrich, of course, injured his ankle in the opening round game. He went from crutches to an air cast to tape to the floor in two days. A pretty remarkable recovery. Heinrich looked pretty good in warm-ups. Would not start, though, but it wouldn't matter because the rest of his teammates started quickly. Nick Collison, baseline, reverse. 16 seconds in, it was two zip, and the Jayhawks were off and running. Boshi, the steal. Big guy, Drew Gooden, running the floor. A nice little finish. It was four zip, 30 seconds in. Collison, inside for two. Six zip, a minute and a half in. Sam Montgomery would not call a timeout, Digger. Yeah, I, I thought when you're down six or eight in the NSA term, you've got to get the timeout. You can't let it blow out the 15 and wait for the TV timeout. Look at the big blocks. Kansas, big guys, intimidating on the defensive end. Finally, Collison, he'll clean up the garbage here. It is 10-0.
about three minutes into this game. Next time down, Collison, long jumper. Jayhawks working hard. Oh, he'll hit that. Roll. Can't leave him open. Stanford reeling. I mean, on the ropes in the first part of the opening round, a charge called on Jacobson. Roy Williams loving the effort of his team early on without Heinrich on the floor. Now here comes the three, and of course, the next dead ball, you get a TV timeout. But 15 zips, that's a big hole to make up for a Stanford team that's not that quick or type the team that can press and come from behind. That you're down 15 nothing. Oh, by the way, here comes Kirk Heinrich, and you saw he was hitting shots right away. He comes off the bench and gets 10 points in that first half. Unbelievable half for the Jayhawks with Heinrich coming off the bench. And on the screen, Boshi knocks out another triple. It was a 23-point lead, opening seconds of the second half. Heinrich, Collison, big guy shows patience and lays it in, and Kansas is cruising. Stanford, this is the thick ankle problem we had. They're little thick ankles to stay with Kansas. You mean they're slow? Well, they're not built for the vertical game, the up-and-down game. They're thick gonna, ankles. They're not going to play catch-up when you're down 15 because they don't have the quickness to do it. Oh, good. With the big slam on the break, Kansas up 26. It is showtime. It is woodshed. Call it whatever you want to. That was just blowout city. I don't know. I ran out to make a phone call before the game. I was excited to watch it. I came back. I said, you guys, what's the score? Did I start yet? 15 zip. It was over. It was over. It was a knockout. Forget about it. The Jayhawks blitz city. It is the worst loss for Stanford since a 32-point loss at Arizona in 98 as they shoot three for 22 from behind the line. Boy, Williams couldn't have been more pleased. The game itself, I thought Bosch was big, getting us off with some threes early. Uh, Nick uh, uh, rebounded the ball and rebounded from a difficult game that he had two days ago. Uh, Drew's inside scoring, uh, our defense, uh, you know, Drew knocking the ball loose 35 feet away and going down to dunking it meant that all five of our guys were out on the court uh, defending. And I thought Keith uh, and Aaron were very active with the defense early. We came up with some steals early and, and got us going. But uh, defensively, we were relentless, and it was a swarming style defense early in the game, and that really set the tempo. Uh, the eighth seed is a tough seed to come in with because you know you're going to have to play a, a number one seed second round if you get there. And uh, all, your, all your ducks are going to have to be in order to win under those circumstances. And we pretty much knew before the bracket came out that the teams seeded eight were going to have a tough second round game. Since making the final four then, it's the third time in four years that Stanford does not get to the Sweet 16. I'll tell you what Roy Williams did smartly to get this game going. Take a look at the two freshmen. He starts Langford and Miles. And what he does to take the pressure off those kids, you play pressure defense. They pressured the ball. They pressured the passing lane. And that's why they jumped out 15 zip. And give them credit to say, all right, guys, we're going to think defense. Take the pressure off yourself on offense. And it worked. And from that standpoint, when Heinrich came in off the bench, he's loose. They got the lead. He gets 10 points. And from that point on, Stanford is not a press team. They're not a catch-up team. And that's why this game became a blowout. Hey, guys, I think it was really simply a case of Kansas played Kansas basketball. They played like they had played earlier this year when they got to be number one in America. They really played. They shared the basketball. They had great balance. They shot the ball well. Roy did a great job getting his kids ready after the scare against Holy Cross. Who knows? Maybe the scare against Holy Cross for them, the scare to Duke Cabot and Notre Dame are the things that are going to give them the motivation to march on. Survive in advance they did. Today they were absolutely brilliant. They won't need any motivation if they play Illinois in the next round. They get the winner of the Creighton-Illinois game. We're not going to put the Illini through, but in Chicago they have the edge. And you recall last year it was the physical pounding Illinois gave Kansas that made them go out and beef up that lineup with the recruits like Simeon. So they'll, they'll be plenty motivated if they get a chance to the Illini. I That'll be one that. heck of a basketball game if it happens.